Well, g'day, curd nerds. I've just finished making a sage derby. It's a variation of derby cheese, which is very close to cheddar. It has a very simple cheddaring process. Not as complicated as normal cheddar, but it is a cheddaring process nonetheless. Anyway, what we do is we add in sage leaves into this cheese, giving it a green type of marbling. Anyway, on with the cheese. Well, there's the sage picked freshly from my garden. I did pick off all of the stems and gave it a good wash. And there are the utensils that I'm using for this cheese, um, all sanitized or boiled in hot water, all the steel stuff anyway. So the ingredients for this recipe are 10 litres of full cream milk, an eighth of a teaspoon of mesophilic culture, half a teaspoon of calcium chloride in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, half a, half a teaspoon of liquid rennet in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, one and a half tablespoons of cheese salt, and one cup of sage leaves. Don't forget to wash your sage leaves before you add them to the cheese. Now, we bring the milk up to the target temperature of 29 degrees Celsius, which is 85 Fahrenheit. And then once that happens, we're going to add in our mesophilic culture. Now this was the end of a little jar that I had, so I scraped it all out. I got an eighth of a teaspoon eventually. So just sprinkle that over the surface of your milk. Now the milk I'm actually using is pasteurized but it is unhomogenized, so I think it's known as cream line milk in some places. So once you've got all the culture on top, allow that to rehydrate for five minutes. Now five minutes later, the temperature is still the same, and I just give that a good stir through the milk to allow it to acidify the cheese, uh, acidify the milk. So that's well stirred through. We're gonna let that ripen now for 40 minutes. Put the lid on so no dust or hair go in your milk. So for 40 minutes later, by the magic of video, we're gonna give that a good stir. You'll notice the cream has risen to the top again, so just give that a good stir top to bottom to make sure that's incorporated back into the milk again. So now we're going to add the other ingredients into the milk. We're going to add the calcium chloride. And then we're going to add in... So we'll give it a good stir first. And then we'll add in the, uh, the rennet. So just checking the target temperature after that 40 minutes. I've had the heat off the whole time um, because milk uh, is a really good... It holds its, its heat well. Um, it doesn't get cool in a hurry, as long as you've got the lid on the pot, of course. Now remember, I've got that over the top of a little pot that has um, a boiling water in it, and uh, once the heat's turned off, the steam actually keeps it at the right temperature. Anyway, there goes in the rennet. And give that a stir for no more than one minute. So once you finish stirring that, just uh, make sure the milk has stopped, that's not still flying around the pot. There we go, just stopped it there. And let that set for 60 minutes. So with these, um, sage leaves you can see there's two jugs there the one on the far right has all the stems all the the uh, the stem stems of the of the leaf and i've given this a good wash in my salad spinner so now i'm chopping it up finely using my roller chopper um, if you haven't got a roller chopper just a sharp knife and just cut them up as finely as you can So the addition of the sage leaves is going to hopefully, as I mentioned at the start of the video, to give it some green marbling effect. Certainly the leaves will be distributed throughout the cheese um, and you'll see later on uh, th that the cheese is actually put in the mould in big chunks uh, and that should help with that marbling. Anyway, so that's all done. 
And what I'm going to do now is add two cups of boiling water and allow that to steep until the water is cold. So there we go, and that's 250 mils for everybody who does metric. So give that a bit of a stir and uh, that'll make the water all green and impart a lovely, the, the sage um, oil flavour that uh, you get with those sort of dishes. Now check for a clean break after 60 minutes. Now I checked it after 60 minutes and it was a bit sloppy still. So I left it for another 10 minutes and um, the curd was set properly. So as you can see, lovely nice clean break there with the, with the curd cutting knife. And you can see a fair bit of the cream is actually on top. Um, so it might have been a bit tricky with the finger, so that curd knife really did show that the cut was good. So cut the cubes into 9mm or 3 eighths of an inch. And I can really only achieve that um, with the curd knife. I'm just making those cuts really small. Or well, small as I can anyway. And the uh, the cheese harp or cheese cutter that I have do, to do the horizontal lines is about one centimetre, which is uh, 10 millimetres. There we go, all cut, lovely. And we're going to let that uh, allow to heal for five minutes. Just makes this curd a little bit more solid when you go to stir it. So you can see a little bit of whey there. So just give that a good stir. Yes, lo lovely cubes. Any that aren't uh, small enough, then just cut with a knife. Um, so slowly increase the heat to 36 degrees Celsius and uh, make sure that you stir that over a period. Uh, I stirred for 50 minutes in this case. And as you can see there, after the 50 minutes has elapsed, the curds are quite small. So we're at the higher target temperature now and uh, the heat is well on, truly off. We let that rest and sink to the bottom for 10 minutes and this aids in the cheddaring process, the very basic cheddaring process. So just pour off the way. You can keep that and make ricotta if you want to. I already had some whey in the fridge from my previous cheese. So let that sit in the cheesecloth, the colander line, sorry, the cheesecloth line colander for two minutes. And then just bundle up in a bit of a bag. And as you can see, it's a flat bag. And this is how we do this really simple cheddaring thing. So we put it back in the pot in the cheesecloth. Just press that firmly with your hand. And we need to keep this warm. We need to keep this at 36 Celsius or 96 Fahrenheit. So allow that to rest for 15 minutes. And as you can see, a fair bit of whey has seeped out again. We're just going to drain that off. So once it's drained off, then we can just turn the curd slab and then let it rest for 15 minutes. Just give it another press with your hand. As I'm doing there, we just flip the curd mass over. I'm not able to do everything with one hand there. So just press firmly, as I mentioned, and we'll flip it over in a second. All right, we're going to drain it some more. God, he's a finicky cheese maker, isn't he? Right, there we go. So this not only helps expel some more whey, so do that for another three more times. So rest for 15 minutes, turn, then drain. So after that process, so that's over about an hour and 15 minutes, uh, we've got our curd slab there that's quite flat. And just rest that on a uh, sanitised chopping board. That whole area, Cinco area, is sanitised. 
So I'm going to cut that into 2.5 by 1.25 centimetre blocks, or that's one inch by half inch. So you can see I just moved my sage water and I've got my salt there handy. That salt doesn't have table, so that container doesn't have table salt in it. It actually has uh, fine cheese salt. I actually just used it as a receptacle for the cheese salt. I find it easier to pour into the teaspoon. So I'll just move all that over and I'm going to pop that all back in the pot. There we go. So put all the cubes in the pot. You don't need to mill them or anything. Just put them straight in. So it'll become evident why they're in big cubes in a second. Rightio. Now, uh, one or two things. If you don't want to use sage, this is where you would mill in the salt. But because I'm using the sage, you pour the sage water and the leaves over the curds and you mix it thoroughly and allow them to soak for 15 minutes. Hopefully, and we'll see in the taste test later on, this is where we'll see some marbling in the finished cheese. Um, the outsides of all those cubes will be coated in the, the green liquid and hopefully during this 15 minutes it'll soak in. Um, and that's a good thing. And then when we press the cheese, these big blocks of, of curd will form the cheese, the marbled part of the cheese. Anyway, pop the lid on that and let it go for 15 minutes. So 15 minutes later, just drain the uh, water and the curds through your cheesecloth lined colander. Makes it easier to put it into the, into the mold. But first of all, we have to salt the cheese. So I'm gonna have to pop it back in the pot again. And we're gonna mix in the salt. So that was two and a half tablespoons. It seems like a lot. Um, and I actually think it is for this cheese, but there was a lot of curds. So um, we're hoping this salt is gonna absorb into the big chunks. Normally it would be milled a lot finer if you were using something like uh, making a cheddar or a Wensley Dahl or something like that. Anyway, so pop your cubes into your cheesecloth lined um, mold. I'm using the 165 millimeter mold here. And we get out as much as we can. Even the green stuff on top looks nice. And then we're just gonna fold over the cheesecloth. We'll just try and make sure that there's no wrinkles, of course. Um, just pull that down around all sides. And then we pop, fold over one edge, pop the follower on top, and then we're gonna press out 11 kilograms, uh, which is 20, 24 pounds for 30 minutes. We go. So 30 minutes later, we're going to pull it out of the press again and just keep an eye on it. We're going to press again for 22 kilos, 50 pounds for three hours. But just have a look as I take it out, you'll see that the cubes is not completely formed. It's very loose, so be very careful when you turn it over because it may fall apart. Anyway, so rewrap it back up again, pop it back in the cheesecloth. And uh, as I said, press for 22, uh, 22 kilos or 50 pounds for three hours. So my little spring's a 50 pound spring. Fully closed means it's at 50 pounds of pressure. Okay, so the three hours has elapsed. We're gonna take that out of the cheese basket now. And then we're gonna turn and press for 22 kilos, same weight, 50 pounds, but this time for 12 hours. So just have a quick look this time, you'll see it's nearly fully formed. Still some, uh, you can still see some lines where the curd chunks are, but after this final 12 hour pressing, it should be all good. 
So once again, just fold the cheesecloth over the top, pop the follower on, and if you're using this type of uh, cheese press, then fully compress the spring. If you're using weights, then just pop on uh, 50 pounds or 22 kilos of weights onto your cheese. Very firm press, just like a cheddar. So 12 hours later, this is the next day for me. We're just going to pull that out of the of the mold and the press. Now I just had a quick look at it. Yes, it's fully formed. It looks really good. So now it's ready for air drying. And there's the uh, finished pressed cheese. We're going to air dry it for two to three days and turn twice daily. It is. It smelled really nice. It had a, a lovely sage aroma to it. Anyway, then we wax or vacuum pack it um, and make sure you get two or three coats on there. Then mature at 13 degrees or 55 Fahrenheit for one to three months and turn the cheese weekly in your cheese cave. I'm sure you'll agree that that was a very interesting cheese. You can leave out the sage if you like, uh, just mill the salt uh, at that period. Don't tip any uh, sage water or sage leaves into it uh, and then mill as per the recipe. Don't forget that you can click here and pledge your support via Patreon. That'll keep the cheese making videos flowing and click here to watch another cheese making video. This one is Cotswold and Cotswold has the addition of dried onions and chives. A very interesting cheese indeed. Anyway, thanks for watching Curd Nerds and we'll see you next time.